Welcome to Laser Focus. Uh, my name is RJ Post and I'm with Sound and Tech. This is a series of conversations with equine veterinary industry leaders. I like to ask just three questions and we try to do it in a very short amount of time, very short and sweet. And now we're joined by Dr. Mike Pownall. Uh, the topic today is marketing and positioning of the laser. And so welcome Dr. Pownall, it's always good to see you. Well, thanks, RJ. Always a pleasure to catch up. Um, thank you for doing this with me. Um, before we get into the topic um, and jump into these questions, will you please give us a little background? I think it's so interesting because you've been in practice, you've managed practice, and now, you know, coming from the other side with your MBA and, and management skills, can you talk about where you were and where you are now? Sure can. So uh, before I became a vet, I was a farrier. And when you're six foot four and a farrier, and I started off with reining horses, it's probably not the best thing for your back. And so I realized about seven years in that I needed to do something else. So I went to vet school, met my wife there. We started our own practice, the Key Panel Equine Services in 2002. And since then, we've grown to three practices in the greater Toronto area with about 14 vets. And then we have a seasonal practice in Florida during the winter. Um, I, I don't practice anymore. Uh, I had too many injuries uh, from being a farrier and, and dentistry. So uh, in 2013, as you alluded to, I went and did an MBA. I'm not getting any younger. I need to make better decisions. So I completed an MBA. And since then, I've been focusing on managing my own practice, but also work with Oculus Insights. Uh, and we do practice uh, consulting, uh, ad advising for practices all over the world. I was on a call with a vet from Australia, in fact, yesterday talking about how they're growing their practice there. So that gives me a lot of satisfaction. So let me jump into the first question that I have right. for you. Um, getting associate uh, veterinarian endorsement, not with just this product, but primarily, but other products. How do you get that acceptance, uh, the promotion of a product or service, kind of that motivation or buy-in. Yeah. Yeah. I think the first thing always is there's got to be science behind it. You know, I was thinking uh, before we had this call, I was thinking the first time I saw the sound laser was at an AEP several years ago. And I just remember there was a histological study on the effects of laser. And I'm like, not that I loved histology when I was a vet student, but I could see that yeah, there was tremendous advantages with, you know, or um, changes, positive changes with tissues that had been lasered. And so right off the bat, I mean, as veterinarians were so, I would say, suspicious, wary of just anecdotal evidence. So when we have good science behind it, you know, that helps. Number two, having, you know, an enthusiast within the practice, whether it's a one vet or five vet or more, mm -hmm. having a vet who really wants to, you know, encourage a promoter to sort of the cheerleader for it. And, and then I think the third thing is once the vets see the success in their own hands, um, then it's much easier. So I think, you know, knowing that it's got great science, they can go to the clients, they can talk about the science, they can, you know, give evidence of how this is, you know, will benefit the situation. Uh, and knowing, you know, having great case selection to, to make sure that they, the first few cases are, are good winners. Uh, and then it sells themselves to the vets. Very great points. That's great. And that's what I needed to hear. Um, we'll shift to the second question, which is, uh, and you take your pick, uh, trainer talk or, uh, you know, the, the horse owners themselves. I know you do a little bit of both at your practice um, with your 14 uh, doctors, but what are the keys, do you think, to get them to embrace the technology of laser? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think when we're talking, like particularly, let's say trainers versus horse owners, and then discipline is, um, you know, trainers and owners often have different goals. So the trainer wants to get in the show ring, they want a healthy horse, they want a happy horse, but, you know, their business is showing horses. Um, whereas a horse owner may, you know, they may be one that says, well, I want to do the best for my horse. And if it has to miss a show or two, I'm fine with that. So as vets, we're often caught between them. And so when we're talking to trainers or horse owners, we sort of have to have a message 
for that audience. Uh, it's not necessarily the same message for both of them. And so when we talk to trainers, we, you know, we talk about how, you know, it's, it's not invasive. You don't have to worry about drug testing. Uh, it's not going to mask an injury. Um, it can accelerate heat, healing. You're going to have better healing. So, you know, you're going to have more uh, use of this horse. And then if the horse owner, we say similar messages, but we, we start talking again, that we're not having to inject something. Um, it's, you know, it's good for the horse. There's good science behind it, uh, that they're not going to harm the horse. Uh, and you know, it's like we, what we do as veterinarians, we understand our, our clients and who we're speaking to and making sure that you're sort of focusing on the specific message for the, that particular person you're speaking to. And then again, you know, within dis disciplines, we do a lot of hunter jumper up here. We do a lot of race horses too. And so, you know, race horses, they want a quick fix, you know, hunter jumper may, you know, they say, you know, we have more of a long-term uh, approach to it. So both of them, you know, need to be, you know, handled a bit differently, talked, you know, a bit differently to, to you know, emphasize the pros uh, of the modality compared to others. That's awesome. That, that, uh, that helps me look at both uh, sides and you're kind of in the happy middle in the medium. There. Um, now there's something that I, uh, question number three, I talk about uh, to a lot of my clients, you all uh, included, which is what I call reach and teach. There's, you got to reach your audience and you got to teach your audience. And those are kind of different things. And so do you have like maybe a couple of, of best examples of um, how to do this with the laser? Um, how you get that reach and teach effect going for your clients? Yeah, we did a couple of things. And so, you know, we, we bought our first laser, I think about maybe three years ago. And it was right before the show season started. So, you know, the first thing we did is we had a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with trainers. They're busy. Um, they don't have to, you know, they're not often on social media. Often they live in the country. They don't necessarily have the broadband to download or look at videos. So we, we did a lot of one-on-one -on -one with the trainers. And then we did uh, for our horse owners, a lot of uh, promotion on Facebook, Instagram. We actually, you know, went old school and printed up some little brochures and cards to hand out to people. So when, whenever we were talking to somebody at the horse show or we were at a barn, we were able to leave them a brochure and, you know, so they had something to look at before, later on, sort of constantly reminds them about the, the, the laser. And I felt those two things really, really worked. I mean, you know, we're very aggressive with marketing, so we made some videos um, and we still keep on promoting it. But I th again, this goes back to your second question is the trainers were very much a one-on-one -on -one conversation and the horse owners was a, you know, it's a bigger audience and they're much more online. They're, they're looking at Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And so we sort of approach both of them differently. Good, thank you. Um, as I'm thinking about all this and, and back to your introduction, I'm gonna have to do something I haven't done yet, which is a bonus question. Okay. And I think uh -oh. it's, it's really important uh, because you have that nice mesh of history of practicing uh, and managing. And so we talk about Oculus and, you know, I think about, you know, all these veterinarians in school and I obviously am not a veterinarian. I don't know what everything is involved, but uh, they teach you everything about medicine, right? But I don't think, I think it's lacking uh, maybe some places are different than others, uh, you know, how to run a business, how to run, you know, the legal aspects, hiring and firing, you know, things of that nature. Where does Oculus kind of come in and fill that gap? I think it's important to understand this. Yeah, no, thank you for that, that question. So, you know, as you're asking, I was kind of thinking, you know, the one thing equine vets, uh, we're not great at is asking for advice. We're very, um, you know, Jack and Jill of all trades. Uh, we're, you know, very, we're, you know, in, in spite of us not having great business background, we're very entrepreneurial. Um, we like to, you know, start our little businesses and, you know, and they grow into great businesses. But I think, you know, as Oculus, we, you know, we, we give advice to veterinarians on, you know, whether it's how to manage their people, how to plan for their, you know, selling their practice, how to buy into a practice how to manage your inventory. I mean, we have experts within Oculus that can handle all those things, but I think the biggest thing that we can do is really be that trusted advisor to a person that they know that, 
you know, we know their practice. We can give them an outside perspective. We have different people that if somebody has a, you know, an inventory problem, you probably don't want to necessarily talk to me, but we have other people within the organization that can help. Uh, and I think, you know, really having that relationship, just, you know, like we try to have as veterinarians if we're clients, we're the same way on the other side of it as just being a, a close advisor, having that outside look, having all of us, you know, who started Oculus are veterinarians. We, we all have advanced business education. So we notice like we're, we've been there, we are still there often, and we can just be that trusted advisor. How can um, anybody watching get a hold of you guys easily? Website, phone? Yeah, number. website is oculusinsights.net, or you can just email at info at oculusinsights.net, or just Google us. Uh, we have a strong uh, presence online. And make sure you type in insights as well, because I've done that's just correct. Oculus, yeah. and I got to scroll down. So, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for that information. Good to see you, Dr. Pownall. Um, I appreciate you being on. I'm sure down the road we'll have you on for a different topic. Uh, but until Happy then, day. thank you, everybody, for watching. Be safe out there. See you on the next episode of Laser Focus. Bye-bye. Thanks, RJ. Thank you.